Welcome to the Scientex webinar, Extracurricular Activities, Path to STEM Stars. My name is Enrique Martin under the Scientex account, and I will be moderating this session. Um, with us today, we have two speakers for the session, Jelena Mirovsa-Levic, teacher of mathematics in primary school in Serbia, and Milena Madlenovic, class teacher and Scientex ambassador also from Serbia. Jelena and Milena will present this evening's topic over the following 45 minutes. And for the 15 minutes left of the presentation, we will be welcoming your questions about the topic. Please do not hesitate to use the chat to ask your questions, but also to share your experiences regarding extracurricular activities or your comments and suggestions regarding the topic. Please write me directly um, through a private message in the chat if you have any difficulties while attending the session. I would also like to remind you to please turn off your cameras and microphones during the talk and to address your questions directly to the dedicated chat. That's all from my side, and I will now give the floor to our speakers to begin this session. Okay. Milena? Yeah. Thank you very much Thank you. for the introduction and for the instructions. Okay. Um, as Nika said, Yelena is just beside me. She's the author, author of the, um, I cannot call them classes, they are more like activities. So we will refer to them as more like activities than typical classes. And I am just here to be an interpreter. So that's because Yelena doesn't speak English very well. My uh, role in this will be more to present her activities from the school in this presentation. And. Uh, this is the second time that we are doing this together, so we are very glad to be tonight with you, and thank you, thanks to everyone for being here tonight with us. Uh, yeah, as, uh, the, as it says, actually curricular activities, which I really have a hard time pronouncing curricular activities, yeah, back to same stars, very dramatic title. But the focus would be more on, on something else. Just at the beginning, some basic infos. The activities that were, were done in the classroom or out of the classroom were held by Yelena Milosavljevic, as Enrique said, and Kristina Savic. One is the math teacher, the other is the physics teacher. But areas that, that are somehow uh, approached in those activities are uh, mathematics, physics, computer science, a little bit of chemistry, and engineering, but we just think it's engineering in the theoretical sense. We would like to get back to that part, that area, after the presentation, when we have a chance to discuss a little bit with you. And we are hoping that this presentation will rise a little bit of discussion, a little bit of exchanging of experience, that you have, so please write down in the chat everything that pops up to your mind. Either it's a question or some kind of suggestion or something that you would like to share with us and the rest of the group. Going forward. Okay. We will focus a little bit on the project-based learning, which is not something new. In the, in the methodological sense of the word, in the teaching or learning in the classroom. And it's present for almost about 100 years in that, uh, in that shape. But um, in Serbia, we have experience that it's not just very often. I don't know how it is in the other countries, but mm -hmm. no, we don't use it very often. As a method, as a method, uh, Yelena and I had the chance to talk a little bit about it with the other teachers, but uh, most of the time the reasons for not using project-based learning principles methodology is not having enough time or the very tight curriculum that is pretty much demanding and cannot be stretched as the project-based learn learning is. Um, asking for from us to stretch it out a little bit, the time and the resources and everything else. 
But it is proven uh, that project-based learning is something that is uh, well efficient and productive in a in the learning sense. Of course, there is a problem solving which is which is also something that will try to pass through these activities and expectation of attributes. And you will see what are we meaning uh, under that uh, when we explain the activities that Galena did with the kids. I put here um, just one of the definition of the project-based learning, which is a dynamic classroom approach in which students activate with explore real world problems and challenge and uh, acquire a deep knowledge from it. So it's really the basic function of it, but it's much, much more from it. And it's perfect methodology to go in extracurricular activities, which Elena find out in the, the most beautiful way. Um, Extracurricular activity as a hook for students to get and seem more motivated. Uh, you will see when we present the, the activities that that's the, the, the main reason why why we are doing extracurricular activities at this point. I mean, Yelena is doing them. Uh, this teaches all the freedom to plan activities with their students, which is uh, advantage at this point and gives more space for exploration and project planning and managing. So let's start with uh, the planning box presenting the activities that film did. But the intro class and it was, was uh, trying to get to know a little bit of solar system, but the goal of the info class intro class Production activities were to uh, change the perspective of distance and size of the solar system planets. And how Yellen and she just, um, yeah, so like that. Uh, have to put this. This is something that, that she put like um, in the story. It's just in a way the students, how they will measure the solar system planets not by uh, kilometers or uh, miles or um, uh, I don't know the, the yes about the solar year, but from the hours days yes. So how she did it. And yeah, before that, I'm a little bit jumping up and down and sorry about that. It's a little bit overwhelming when I'm trying to present something like this. But I have to get back a little bit one step forward and say that the first activity was simplified as much as possible, uh, not only uh, to get more realistic perspective or more, um, more catchy perspective for kids to figure out the distance in, distances and the, um, in the solar system and how planets how big are the planets in the solar system. But it's done by a simple, uh, using simple mathematical skills. And it is really easy to get to, to solve the, those problems individually. Uh, how she done it? She starts, yeah, with the Earth and uh, just explaining uh, the distance by using the example of the jet plane is going about 100 miles an hour, and how uh, how much time they will need to go around the world, which is in a volume of 40,000 kilometers uh, long. How long it will take to go around it with a jet plane going that fast? Uh, so, with the best mathematical skills, dividing those. The numbers they got to the point where they will need like 40 hours to go around the, the Earth, uh, which is for kids a little bit more less abstract to figure out how big the planet is. And um, after that, they are putting those 
numbers into the days. So it's one day and one and a half day, a little bit more than one and a half day. And going further with that, if we know how much time we need to go around the sun with the jet plane around the Earth, now we need to figure out how long we need to go around the sun with the jet plane as well. So, scope of the sun is uh, 109 times larger than the volume of the Earth. Knowing that, it is easy to figure out mathematically how to measure the time needed to get around the sun with the jet plane, of course, going a thousand kilometers per hour. So, after the calculating that, it's got notice that we will need like 181 days to go around the sun. Just pretty much getting that into perspective how sun, how much time is bigger than the Earth. So it's like a half a year to get around the sun. And if you can remember, it was like an hour, a day and a half, a little more than a day and a half for the Earth to get around the Earth with the jet plane. So it was pretty much interesting for the kids to get, to look at the uh, volume of the sun and the planets from this perspective, perspective of time, more than looking at it from this perspective of the distance. And there is one more slide we want to um, point out. The presentation that Elena took, which was much, much bigger, but we just took three slides from it. You see, we think that they are the, the pinpoint of the, of, the, of the discussion afterwards that was taken in the classroom. So, astronomy, they were talking about astronomical limit, of course. What is, what is the astronomical limit? And how distant in the years is the one astronomical unit, which is the distance between Earth and the Sun, which is the 17 years. Yeah, of course, going with the jet plane and going with the rocket or any other means of transportation. So, 17 years of traveling by going to the jet plane. And to keep that was uh, a hard moment because they really uh, started figuring out how much time I will need then to go to one planet to another planet or from one place in the space to another place in the space rather than thinking, okay, the distance between uh, planets were that much or this much. So it was more interesting for them to uh, play out with the mathematical, basic uh, mathematical um, skills and uh, just uh, figuring out how much time they will need to get from one place to another. But that was one part of the, of the presentation and how to put the distances in space in a perspective that is more uh, interesting for the kids. The other one was about a little bit of the, about the solar system. And this is the part when, we, when they used uh, when they used uh, some uh, applications. The, the one that is perfect for kids for the basic knowledge of the solar system was a scoop. Uh, solar system scoop is an uh, application that you can find on online application. You can also download it to be a desktop application and you can use it on uh, iOS and Android platforms as well. So it's pretty much for every platform except Linux, unfortunately at this point. But anyway, it can be used as an online application, so it's usable in any platform. Uh, it gives you the perspective of the solar system, of the planet, some characteristic of the planet, information of the planet, um, uh, rotation rules of the planet around the sun, uh, about the moons around the planet. Um, so, Pretty much all the basic information you need about the solar system you will find in this uh, in this um, application, and it's pretty much. Uh, I mean, it's good because you can also use it on the Android platforms, which students did. Because after the intro class with these uh, applications, students just downloaded it, and it was a playable one. 
so it was very interesting for them. Also because it shows, for example, the Earth in a real-time parameter, so in a real-time uh, how, uh, what's the position of the Earth in the solar system and uh, which part of the planet is turned towards the sun, which one is uh, in the dark, as well as they can shift from in the time to see where, when, what was the um, uh, location of the planets in the solar system some particular moment in the past. So it's also very interesting for them to just shift a little bit in the time with, with the solar system. So it was playable in general and interesting for them. And it was an intro class to get to know a little bit more about the solar system and the distances of the planets. Yeah. So, Yeah, then. So this is this is a little bit. Uh, this is a mistake. This there was a seven groups. This was my mistake. I was making the, the uh, presentation. So it was a seven groups, excluding the Earth from the group of the planets at the eight, as it says here. So the question for the groups was how to get there to the, one of the planets. Seven groups. Every group, but one planet of the solar system. The question for every group was how to get to that planet, what methods to use for exploring planet, possible, possible obstacles and dangers of the mission they had. And uh, of course, this, this, this was the starting point of the project. So after the intro, intro class, this is how they started their project, with the field basic. Uh, questions. Afterwards, there were some instructions for the group. And they were put as a story, of course, so it would be easier for them to get into the role of the explorers, of the space travelers, as we can say. So, uh, you're an interstellar explorer. Uh, your distant uh, destination is one of the planets. You need to make a plan that will get you and your crew uh, to the destination set. So that's the first thing they will need to think about, how to get to the destination safe. Choose a vehicle, for example, a rocket, or any other thing they think of. Uh, propulsion, solar, nuclear, hydrogen-based propulsion, or some other propulsion they think of. Food supplies, air supplies, according to the time spent on the journey. So they will have to a little bit think of uh, math problems, how long they will build journey, how long they will journey will, will last, and it is it. And we didn't mention that it, this was a sixth grade, so it's like 11 year old, no, 12 year old, 12 year old, year old children. So this is a little bit like a struggle for them, but what we did is we put something some uh, resources, some, we referred them to some stories. The first one was Journey of the Horizons. Because there is so much information about the, how New Horizons came, uh, just traveled from the Earth to the now Pluto, and what this journey was uh, um, needed needed for this, uh, what was needed for this journey to happen, and what uh, New Horizon was equipped with, so it can get to the point where, where it is now. So it's very interesting to find a little bit more about the New Horizons and the journey of this uh, satellite. So this is the first reference that Galena gave to the children. The second one was a space shuttle simulator. And this is the Android app, and it's pretty much also a playable one for the kids. So we wanted them to, she wanted them to for them to get in the role into the role. So uh, she asked them to download this app and practice a little bit of the space flight in the space shuttle. Okay. This one was very interesting because we uh, I saw that she also uh, used this in the 
the first was used in the classroom. So it was on a bigger uh, picture. Yeah, or it was on a it was on a smart board. But yeah, we use use the smart board as a smart board but more like um projecting. Yeah. And uh, canvas. Okay. The next one Okay, second task was to explore as much as they can about the planet they will visit. So uh, to report back to Earth mission control. And uh, they had really, really, I had the chance to see all of the presentation. Yelena gave me all the presentation of the group. She did, did this activities in two schools. So she did it in both of them and she has multiplied uh, presentation for each planet, and kids were very thermal, very, very full of information with such a great examples. Like here, you can see. I think this was I'm not sure the next Mercury. Oh no, the Jupiter. This was Jupiter, the, the middle one. You can see here where they put uh, all those little dots that you can see. Those are little Earths in the uh, diameter of the, of the Jupiter. So you can see how, uh, how so much bigger is the Jupiter from the Earth, how, how much little Earth we need to make the diameter of the Jupiter. So they use their way to put in the perspective the face of the, for example, Jupiter in this point. These are just some examples those um, reporting back to the mission control subjects. Uh, and uh, these are some photos from the activities when they were tracking uh, their foundings. Uh, unfortunately, we will not have much time to talk about uh, what were all the ideas that kids gather up about how to get there, what was the problems they encountered, what they didn't uh, have the enough skills or enough knowledge to solve the problems about, but they saw so many problems. And <coughs> even though some problems were solved, some problems weren't solved, uh, there was a question for the future to, to, for them to just uh, figure out. So, it's also a part of motivation for them to, to, to go further and when they gain uh, those skills and knowledge, they will have opportunity. I mean, they will gain, gain those skills and knowledge just because they will try to go further and solve all the problems. Yeah, this is the bonus test. This is something that uh, she was, uh, thinking about using in the next time when she worked with uh, the next group of the six year, uh, sixth graders. And we would really like to, to hear your opinion about this. Is it, is it too much, for example, for the kids of this age to think about those things? But the question is, try to imagine and describe a being from a planet you have visited. How it will look like, taking consideration, uh, Composition of the planet, atmosphere, gravitational strength, distance from the sun, and some other, some other, um, some other things. So uh, we would like now just to see for for you to think about this. And do you think? I mean, I know when I think about it, it is interesting for me. I don't know if I have skills to do something like this, but. Do you think it's too much for the kids of this age to deal with this kind of a problem? Because in the project-based learning, in the problem-solving learning, the main principle is to give the, the, the problem to the kids that is, they can solve, and not the one that they cannot solve. Okay, and the final, final uh, activity was maybe one of the most interesting for the kids that was um, 
activity where those kids had the chance to push um, painfully for, to the teachers, the professors from the University of the Mathematics and Physics. Uh, they uh, did a favor and uh, they put the electronic telescopes. So, uh, I mean, Helena figured out with them the date when the Saturn and Jupiter were reached visible in the sky. So they set the date and they organized the uh, Saturn and Jupiter seeing with the electronic telescope. So it was the outside door activity. And this is the part when we I will get back at the beginning of the presentation when we were mentioning exploiting the assets and what assets do we have around us that we can use to make the extracurricular activities or any other activities more interesting for the kids. Uh, and this one, definitely the one. Uh, the experience, I was with Yellen on that activity as well. And yeah, I think about it. <laughs> but uh, the interesting was that how the professor at the university was so thrilled about the idea of the kids to we have this activity and they were so into, they were so wanting to help uh, Yelena and the colleague and wanted to, to help out to, to, to show the children. So this is, this is one great moment for the kids when they really, I mean, we always talk about in scientists how it's important to catch up, to hook up the kids in the STEAM, um, STEAM subjects. And this is a great way to, hook up, to just pull those kids into the STEAM with those kind of activities. So this is something to think about. If you have the, any resource of this kind in your country or in the country but the city, think about it. I, hope that the professors from the university where you are from or some other, uh, some other individuals uh, failed to, to help you out with these kind of activities. Okay, a little bit of the outcomes. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm a little bit fast. I'm trying to figure out Okay, there are some comments also in the chat. I really like to read them now. Let's, let's try to finish this and then get into the discussion. And please write down, I will try to, rem to remind you, please write down every suggestion you have because I know that Yelena will, uh, as well as probably anyone in the group that is doing this kind of uh, activities, will try to use them in their classes with their kids. And if you have any questions, also write them down in chat. But about the out outcomes, uh, the project is focused on the student learning goals, including standards-based content. So it's not only about the content that is not in a regular cur curriculum. It's it's about the regular curriculum, but a little bit um, furthermore from it. And uh, not only the content, but the skills such as critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, and self management, which we had really good in place and they're solving problems. The project is done by uh, meaningful problems to solve or questions to answer uh, at the appropriate level of challenge. And we talked about, we mentioned appropriate level of challenge, problem has to be solvable, so people as so students can solve it, but still to be challengeable for them, to be a challenge for them. Students engage in an extended process of asking questions, finding resources, and applying information, which is a core thing in uh, extracurriculum activities. They can always contact the person and get the um, uh, some kind of consultation with the mentor because this kind of activities it's not like uh, teacher is 
the one who is leading them. It's something that the pupils are trying to, to lead and to manage and solve. So, uh, so teacher is here more like a mentor, some kind of uh, help of a friend rather than to be the one that will pass on the information or the knowledge. Student and teacher uh, reflect on learning and effective, uh, effectiveness of their inquiry and project activities, the quality of the students' work, obstacles they were stumbled on, and how to overcome them. So this is just some points of the project-based learning and problem-solving learning that um, the element at this point either uh, the experience to encounter. Uh, and we wanted to put them all on the same page to see what's the, uh, what is the, sorry for, for this one, but what is, the, what good is, does come from all of this? Let's say it's just like that. I cannot remember the word now, and I'm sorry because of that. And this is a little bit rusted. Uh, okay, questions. How to engage a project with more engineering tasks? We have the CD leaders. Uh, we have the engineering part thinking about the propulsion, the, what they need with them to observe the planet, uh, what kind of... Um, tools, but uh, we really didn't have any uh, moment to make something, to engineer something and do more with their engineering skills. So probably we will have to include some teachers, engineer, engineer, engineers, yeah, technical teachers in this one. So if there is now in the group somebody with those kind of skills and knowledge, maybe there will be some uh, yeah, um, some kind of a <laughs> no, sorry. some kind of um, advice, yeah, for us, some yeah, the advice, and of course, shoot references and suggestions for for improving these activities. Those are the questions for you at this point. What do you think about it? How do you see this can be improved? How to get more of engineering in tasks in those kinds of activities because we think these kind of activities and this plan, project plan, learning and what, everything that is said now, have a really good potential but should be developed further and this is a chance to talk about it a little bit more with the colleagues and that's you, all of you tonight with us. So, Practically, this would be all. Maybe we have finished a little bit sooner than we thought we will, and maybe I plan to talk a little bit further about it, more about it. But we don't want to to water it out. So I think we catch the point. We like to put a little bit of ideas, and and we can maybe now it's time a little bit to see if people have some yes. to say about it. Elena, Mirena, first of all, thank you so much uh, for a very interesting and I would actually say practical presentation. I, I don't think it's uh, sometimes that easy to, to make presentations that practical so that um, participants get an idea of how they could actually develop a, a, a lesson, right? So meanwhile, I give a couple of minutes uh, to the rest of participants to think about their questions or, or plan about any kind of suggestion they would like to make in the chat. Uh, I would like to comment, uh, going back to what I was saying before, that it it's really nice to see with how with some simple apps you were mentioning this app regarding solar system scope um, and some simple exercises like just dividing by groups uh, your students and they will each of them analyze a, a planet. Uh, it serves like really uh, interesting examples of how simple activities can be in a certain way. So. This means this is a kind of exercise that you can actually copy-paste with your students at your classroom, but it also serves as a 
uh, it illustrates how easy it could be to develop a, 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 um, a lesson following this same kind of structure. So uh, following a theoretical approach about something that you might be interested in and then thinking where you were asking several questions like maybe students could end up describing um, circular beings or aliens or, or how, how they would think they would plan the, the trip. No? So it's, it opens the field to many more activities, I would say. Yeah. And when we think, talk, talking about the scheme, we're always talking about getting um, into the group of the scheme subjects also in, in art. So this is, this is a good thing maybe to use this kind of activities to not only uh, talk about how or describe the extraterrestrial life from the other planets, but to really put it on the, in the picture how could it look? Um, and of course, having in mind all those uh, things that we mentioned previously in the slides. So, yeah, I think there is so much potential in this kind of this lesson plan. But, yeah, this is when we like to hear everybody's voice and to just fill out the maybe holes or to improve some some things and to widen out maybe this activity so it can stretch out maybe not for it was like a three weeks. Okay, so it's like four weeks. Yeah, it lasted for four weeks this activity for them. So they had the activity, they had the meetings once a week, but they the whole activity is lasted for four weeks, so it's a month. But maybe it can be even more widen out to last for two months, but to be really meaningful for them to get a little bit deeper into the problem or uh, to do something more with it. Yeah. So, yes, I mean, you are right. If, if there's any other participant that would like to share similar experiences, maybe they are not directly related with astronomy, but uh, they conducted similar exercises during their during their lessons, or they have any other question related to the topic or how to organize uh, one lesson, how, it's, um, how to structure the, the lessons or so on, please, now is the moment to share this is an open discussion, so feel free to to share your comments or your questions regarding the, the presentation, if there's anything you would like to share. So we are getting many thank you messages, even in the in the private. Some people are writing me directly through the private uh, message. Please remember to, to to write to the to select everyone who we'll sending your messages. Otherwise, the rest of participants won't be able to to read them. I, I also got some messages from before. I think it was from Susana Metzarasova that she was also using the same um, solar system uh, scope app before. I don't know if she would like also to share something, uh, any other comments? Yeah, well, I, I forgot to say, uh, the, the kids also used a NASA site as a resource. So it, they were referred to the NASA site as a resource, but we didn't put that in the presentation although we mentioned it in the introduction of the webinar. So, because so much information about the space travel is there, almost everything essential about the space travel you can find on the NASA site. So yeah, that could all, that should, we should also have that in mind. Okay, I, I, I would like to remind participants that as always, uh, we will share the, the slides uh, with all participants and and also the links that have been given, I will include them in the in the email. I'm getting some more messages, but I think it's mainly uh, thank you emails. Many teachers saying how useful this is. Um, we have this comment up uh, with Fatma that says that she will start uh, thinking about planet and stars with her students also. Yeah, I want to thank for everyone being here tonight. And uh, hopefully, we'll have more of Helena in the future. <laughs> yeah. Even though I, this is the second one, sure. yeah, she, she 
really is into this and his motivation and his ideas so very well prepared. I, I got a comment, uh, she wrote it on the on the private message, uh, that it was a very very useful and adaptable to higher classes. And she's saying that in she teaches in high school and she often uses Stellarium for her astronomy lessons. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the rest of participants also know the, the software or the app Stellarium. Um, I would invite Patricia Mariani to share maybe the link with the rest of participants. It would be great. Yeah. Could share a link with everyone. And if any other participants have any idea which application would be good, this is it. Thank you. Okay, well, unless anybody wants to make any other comment, I think we can start concluding the, the lesson, the meeting, not the lesson now. <laughs> So, ah, thank you very much, uh, Tetsa, for sharing the, the link uh, for Stellarium also with the rest of participants. So, again, thank you uh, to both our speakers, Jelena and Milena, for this really interesting presentation. And as I, as I said before, really practical presentation, which is also uh, really uh, useful for our teachers. And see you next time.